about a week ago, Mrs. GVG issued an executive order from the front office, which is the kitchen. The problem is I've acquired so many cars now. I went from getting just a stink eye to those stink eyes. I've been given the ultimatum. Standing in the kitchen one day when she was making my favorite spaghetti, Lord knows I need more spaghetti. She suggested I start selling a couple of cars or I ain't getting no more of this talking about the spaghetti. I just can't run the risk of that happening. Whole wheat noodles though, it's healthy. I got too many white Toyotas anyway. My name's Jason and this is Grease Belly Garage. Come on. There we go. Come on baby. Ah. Thing I decided to do here was just clean the car up and get all the big chunks off of it with the pressure washer. So the next thing we're gonna work on is the high idle problem. Everything in this engine seems to be pretty good. These things here are very, very bad for cracking and dry rotting. And this one, this one's actually on the verge of probably breaking somewhere. You can feel it's kind of weak. What I'm gonna do is start at the simplest things first. I'm going to take this intake off and look at the throttle blade, look at the passages for the idle air control. Okay, I'm indeed getting rusty here. It's been a long time. So I got this intake hose off and I actually ended up pulling off. It's a little bit rough, but I don't think it's leaking any air through it yet because the inside of it's in better shape than the outside. Now you can see where my finger is pointing. That's a little hole for the air intake before that throttle plate back there and it comes out on the other side. The idle air control valve is actually down on the bottom of the butterfly valve with those two hoses coming out where my finger is. This over here is actually a throttle position sensor that can be adjusted. Doesn't look like it's much fun to do because of the screw head locations. So I'm going to first clean that hole, clean the hole, butterfly valve and crank on this adjustment screw and see if I can't get this thing to idle better. By the way, this is intake valve and turbo cleaner, but it should be safe enough for this. I'm going to grind that little hole and just fill that thing up. All right, we're about 20 minutes in. let it warm up while this stuff dissipates here. Okay, there's already a major improvement in the way this thing idles. It's been kicking down in steps, which I think is normal. It's been running for about, I don't know, 12, 15 minutes probably. I'm gonna go ahead and take this screwdriver and try to adjust that screw. idling at over 1100 so we're gonna have to go on to further diagnostics also I know exactly why these things break because when you're working on this thing your elbows will hit this and I just shattered another couple of pieces so it's beyond repair at this point I'm gonna have to try to find some online I couldn't find any vacuum leaks with the spray did it a couple more times that stuff burns and it stinks, man. Whew. It smells like hair burning. It's gross. Okay, guys, we're back for another day on the Mr. 2. I've already cut myself on the positive battery terminal. I have no idea how I did that. So there's a blood bath going on here. That is blood, not fluids. I have removed the throttle body. This here is the throttle body. I know a lot of people know what that is. This right here is the idle air control valve. This is a air feedback tube here, and these are coolant lines. But basically there's a little plunger duber in here that 
I don't know if it's air. I don't know how it's triggered. It's either air or temperature or something. And I think these things here get carboned up and don't let the air, you know, this is like a vacuum, I guess. And then the other, in the other segment of the video, I cleaned out that front hole. And then this is the back hole right here, back hole. And the back of the throttle body was dirty anyway. So I'm gonna clean all this up and try to get this IAC off. And I think these screws are actually called JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard or something. I'm not a certified mechanic. I just do the best I can with what I got and I ain't got much. Well, they are JIS screws and I did strip the heads of two of them, but um, I did get some vice grips or yeah, vice grips. They popped right out with those. Down in there is fairly fairly clean actually which surprises me i'm going to clean it up anyway and put some uh, rtv kind of smear it very lightly on here i think that'll be okay since i don't have a another gasket okay i filled these two holes up here with um the throttle body air intake cleaner and basically put my fingers over those two holes and just shook 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 shake 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 your eye I was going to buy a new one of these, but the only ones I could find were, you know, from China on Amazon. And anything else that was of better quality was like $250. So I think this will help. I think everything I'm doing will help, but I think I'm ultimately going to find out that that vacuum hose going here was probably a majority of the problem. Now, why that didn't pick up the other night when I was spraying cleaner all over is because... Well, it was on the bottom, and I don't think I was getting the cleaner in the right spot. Okay, who knows how long later and how much blood I've lost at this point. Got everything back together. Put in a new piece of hose, where that hose is split. I have it right here. Where's the split end? This is the end that was on the IAC, right there. And it was just, I mean, it basically just fell right off. That may have been a big part of the problem. Throttle's all hooked back up. And I'm going to fire this thing up and see if it does any better at all. And then we'll go to phase three. sensor may have uh oh there we go now we're dropping next phase throttle position sensor possibly still check the timing okay we finally came up with a level of success here now i had actually videotaped testing the throttle position sensor and i somehow screwed up the video but it was okay there's a process to do that with some feeler gauges and a ohm meter. The timing seems to be okay. What I ended up doing was there's a set screw on the other side of this duber here. Down in there. I adjusted that. We've got it idling at about 1100. It kind of bounces back and forth between 1000 and 1100. When you kick the AC on, the idle is supposed to kick up a little bit. I didn't hear it kick up that time, but there's an adjustment for that too. And by the way, the air conditioning works on this car. It needs a little bit of Freon, but I can hear the compressor engaging, cycling. Right down here, there's a plastic, right there where my finger is, there's a plastic nobular that you can adjust. I turn that out, you hear how it idles up. That's for the air conditioning and the headlights. So if I go turn the air conditioning off now, it should go back down some. 
Oh, the air coming out of the vents is actually slightly cool. There you go. It kicked back down as soon as I turn the air off. So that valve should be set pretty close now. So yeah, it kicked back down pretty good. And you can actually hear yourself thinking here now. There it goes, look at that. Got this little rusty spot. And if you look real close, there's a teeny weeny, teeny weeny little hole in there. I'm gonna take this 600 grit sandpaper and kind of sand on the rusty spot as good as I can without getting it on the good paint still. I'm just gonna go straight to the silicone. And yes, I realize this is not proper. Okay, it looks like the hole is pretty well filled up. Bought another one of these Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Paint Plus Primer Universal Bright White. Now this is not to make the car look like a show car. This is just to put something on here to keep it from getting worse until somebody decides what to do with this. Now, if it were me and I was gonna keep this car, I'd probably sand down this whole top down to the trim, down to that trim there, and just paint this entire top black and clear it. I think it would give it a cool look, but I'm not keeping this car, so it's up to the next guy to give themselves a cool look. Okay. Now around the outsides of it a little bit, I'm gonna try to flare it out. Try to do a little bit of what I would call a blend job. Make sure you don't drop the white paint on your blue cloth upholstery. Doing this with the windows open. Also, don't bother cleaning the greasy fingerprints off of it. <clears throat> yeah, you probably don't want to take bodywork advice from me. I'll just leave this sitting here so I can remind myself of what I've done, I guess. Now, the goal here is not so much what you're seeing here, it's what you're seeing over here. It looks really good from a few feet away. And it should last, I don't know, maybe a year. A few weeks ago, I had done some work getting this thing to idle correctly or as close to correctly as I could. The first thing I'm gonna do before I do anything is test my idle situation and see if it's still holding up. Oh, the key buzzer's working, that's good. I've got a broom jam down onto the clutch pedal for the clutch safety gizmo. What I'm doing now is cycling the key a series of times for a few seconds at each time because the fuel pressure regulator or the check valve in the fuel pump, whatever these have, obviously is not maintaining pressure into the fuel rail. That's always a number one symptom of a bad fuel pump. I'm pretty sure this car has a fuel pressure regulator. So I'm gonna reprime it by doing that. Okay, now we're about 10 minutes in. It's idling at, geez, about 1100. That's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it without really digging into the thing. Okay, here's my touch up um, result. It's not perfect, but it's not rust anymore. It dried up really good, really hard. And I grabbed some stuff here to try to create this. This is blood from my arm, we'll just disregard that. The next thing I'm gonna do is try to deal with the transmission gear grindage going on. This Toyota mechanic I know told me to get some 8090 gear oil, or 7590, sorry, with uh, limited slip additive in it. Yeah, this has plus additives. And he said that that can help that situation. I'm also gonna check the throw on the slave cylinder to make sure the clutch is functioning properly. 
I'm sure where it's going to be. Um, synchronizers in the transmission, or maybe it hasn't been serviced in a long time and it needs some fresh oil. You never know with these finicky little Toyota gearboxes sometimes. I'm also going to do something about these pink calipers and caliper brackets because I just can't, in good faith, sell a car with pink calipers, being the manly man that I am. Okay. Down at the bottom of the transmission right there, you can see a bolt in the transaxle. That's supposed to be 15 sixteenths. That's the drain bolt. And somewhere up above there, which I can't see yet, should be an upper bolt to refill the transaxle. But I'm going to keep this car jacked as low as possible so I can get as much oil out as possible and try to reach my chubby Popeye arms back in there. I also just realized this does not have a catalytic converter either. Whoever buys this is going to have to register in a state where, you know, a lot of states after 25 years, it doesn't matter anyway, but at least that's what I hear. Righty tighty lefty Lucy. <clears throat> there it goes. Make sure you knock your drain pan out of the way so you make a big mess. <clears throat> Get over there. I need to start taking yoga classes or something. Work on my stretching. All right, finally it's finger tight or finger loose. Oh, well that oil looks brand new, so. Yeah, that oil looks like it's in really good shape. I'll probably turn around and dump that into another car for something. Let's be optimistic here. Nothing stands between a man as his spaghetti. Let's see if I can cross thread this plug really good. Now get in there. Oh my gosh. It's like just out of reach. Jeez Louise. <sighs> Upon further review and retrieving this drain plug, which I just dropped right back in the middle. Goodness. Um, there's quite a bit of metal shavings and debris in the soil. This was a brand new drain pan, so I know this wasn't here before. The problem is, it's always my luck, the drain plug fits right in the middle, right in the bottom of this drain pan, so I have to keep turning it upside down to fish it out. Keep an eye on that clutch fork and see what kind of travel we got going on there. Gotta take that one out. Stake some tubing down in there. And by the way, this clutch action seems to be just fine. There's nothing more miserable than trying to get a curved, very lightweight hose down an engine compartment. So I taped it to a piece of an inch and a half or inch and a quarter, maybe. I don't know what that is. PVC pipe that was laying on the floor. And then I still had a hard time getting it down through there. It just doesn't weigh enough. But now I've got it down here and I can use that to feed the oil in from the top side. Okay, gear oil done. Painted the calipers. Wasn't able to take the reels off because you gotta have one of them stupid thin walled sockets. I did the next best thing and just spray painted right through the wheel and got paint all over the wheel that I can wipe off later. I had to move the car to and fro to get it all. So I'm gonna go and test drive my gear oil solution to the grinding gear. Before I do that though, and I shoehorn my carcass in the driver's seat, which is always fun for me, I'm gonna charge up this air conditioning system first and the Schrader valve service port and an MR2 I don't know if I can get you in there. It's right, it's right down in there. You'll just have to trust me. There it is, now you can see it. Blue cap, low pressure. I think it only needs about half a can. I don't think it's actually out, I think it's just low. Whoever invented these kinds of packages that are 
welded around the edge. Really ought to be wrapped in plastic and beat with a rubber hose. You gotta get a tool to get your tool out. Now let's see if I can't break something hooking this thing up. I think the proper way to do this is to remove the spare tire. But we don't have time for all that. Oh yeah, she's definitely low. When they're completely empty or very low, I just go ahead and turn the can upside down and put an initial charge in there as liquid. This one may also be getting a can of stop leak. Lots of guys don't like stop leak, but there's probably about seven cans of stop leak in my trusty Ram 1500, and it's never plugged up anything. That's kind of an old wives tale that you hear about here and there. It starts going in slow, just give your can a little shake. Upside down. That way you can flood the compressor with liquid freon. And blow something up. first started charging this the first time of course I had to break out my old faithful gauges here because I wasn't sure if that auto parts store version was working um, you can see where it's at now I could not get it out of this low range for a long time and as I was doing that I discovered that this condenser down in here has its own dedicated electric fan motor and it wasn't working and I think it had Push such a high head pressure that it may have gotten the expansion valve sticky. So then I charged it back up again, and the last time I checked, it was blown out really cold. But this thing's still going to get a can of stop leak because I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's got some kind of a small, small little leak. Like this thing's really sensitive to adding freon. Just a little bit goes a long way on this gauge here. Well, that's going to make a liar out of me, isn't it? Ah, there we go. And I can actually drive it in the air conditioning this time. Hello. I want to dedicate this next segment to my neighbors who wanted to see me actually get in this car. They're the neighbors I got the car from. I'm kind of glad I got the air conditioning working. At least I hope it still works. I'm going to take it for a test spin and see if that gear oil solved the gear grinding problem and I think it may have. So this is dedicated to my neighbors. Hey y'all. <sighs> See it's really not that uh, difficult. You just gotta roll backwards a little bit. <sighs> Put your leg under the steering wheel. <clears throat> oh. Get the other leg in here. Uh, just see the whole way back. Uh. I guess it's good enough. This broken plastic trim. And you gotta pull the window shut like this. And then the door. Oh, oh man, it just glided right in reverse. All right, maybe what I can do is take my handy dandy light and reach my tripod. Yes, uh, us large people know how to get things done. You know, you don't let size get in your way. I wonder if this thing quit recording. I wonder if it was recording the whole time. Of course, I just realized you guys can't see anything. You know what? You guys don't need to see my ugly mug. First gear, clutch, right into second gear like it was nothing. Now the test. Uh oh. Well, third gear still sucks. Uh, it's a little intimidating when a F-250 Super Duty pulls in next to you too. shift a lot better than the other gears. Uh, it will go on the third if you just jam it hard. Uh, fourth gear is great. So yeah, we got uh, bad third gear synchronizer. 
really doesn't need a third gear. This is second. So if you just spool it up to about, you know, 40, you can just jump right into fourth gear like it's nothing. Alright, I'll leave it out of the garage so I can clean up my mess. For not being a certified Toyota mechanic, I actually have this thing running pretty darn good, I feel like. Okay, fun seekers, back for another day in the MR2. I've already shoehorned myself into it. It's about a thousand degrees in here. And the real test is to see if it has that start delay and to see if the air conditioning still works. But I'm gonna drive it over underneath a shade tree so I can give it a hand bath. That's something I don't do too often. Here we go. Nope, still got the starter delay. Not too bad though. That's definitely the check valve in the regulator or the pump. As I probably said in another segment. Let's see how the AC's doing today. It's cooling off. <laughs> Maybe I'm not such a hack after all. I'm not going to wash this thing out in the direct sunlight. That ain't happening. It's a miracle I'm even going to wash it in the shade. Ugh. Why do I keep getting Toyotas with manual steering? This really is a pretty good little car, actually. I know I make a lot of cynical jokes about it on video, but... You know, for a little mid-engine two-seater Toyota that's... How old is it now? 1988 to... 2023, 35 years old. It's really held up really well, actually. So the goal today is to work on the cosmetics and aesthetics of this car so I can get some decent pictures of it. Now, I am an absolute authority on cosmetics and aesthetics. With that said, this is one of those cars that's at the teetering point. It's like, do you fix it up to a high level? I really don't think it's worth doing all that. The parts for this car are very expensive. I'm not going to rebuild the transmission. I'm not doing any of that stuff. This is an end user car here. So that end user needs to make the decision as to whether they want to put more money into it and kind of roll the dice on its future collectability and or value? Or do they just want to customize it, modify it, you know, part it out? Whatever they want to do, they can do it as their heart's desire. I think the best use for this car is just to keep it patched up and keep it on the road and keep the history alive. You know, a lot of things on this car aren't aren't original anyway. It's been painted pearl pink white you know it had pink calipers for land's sake but you know somebody might want to put different rims on it or maybe they want to put stripes on it or maybe they want to paint it some other color or hack a sunroof into it whatever they want to do this is a great car for that because it hasn't been hacked beyond repair my job is to since i couldn't use this car for its intended purpose which was originally for my dad my job at this point is just to get it back out into the wild, into the car market with the car crowd. Kind of let the, you know, let the cards fall where they might. Is that the right term? Whatever happens, happens. Oh, and there's also a, better get this off the mirror. This is a, I don't know what this is. Well, it doesn't smell what I thought it might smell like either. We'll just throw that on the ground. Now let's see if my wet foot can slip off the clutch pedal while I take out my entire garage. <clears throat> uh oh. This AC temperature is probably blown out of here based on my finger thermometer here. It's probably around 48 degrees. I'm going to try to do something about this steering wheel next, I think, and make it look a little bit better. I may not do everything by the book all the time. But I go out of my way to do things that aren't permanent so that somebody else can reverse it if necessary. So I kind of split the whole thing down the middle of function, appearance, 
and uh, permanency. Permanency. I picked up some of this Krylon Fusion paint based on somebody that told me it's pretty good stuff. And uh, I don't know if they told me it's pretty good stuff because it works really good or because, you know, I decided to go ahead and paint the steering wheel first and the color turned out to be a really good match, actually. It doesn't look like it in the, you know, the cap's not accurate, but I don't know if you remember all the spokes more off the steering wheel and stuff, but it really looks pretty good or it's going to look horrible when I take that plastic off. But this stuff... I did this first and I feel like I've been to a rave party or something. This stuff is intense. So I had to go out there and, you know, take some deep breaths out by the excursion. And when I got back in, I was so giddy, I decided to take, after trying several pieces of plastic and different things for this plastic thing i'm not buying these new trim pieces okay i just i'm not going to pay the money for them what i did instead is i went back to my hvac roots and got some uh, armaflex or insulation for the line set of a mini split air conditioner cut it to size and spray painted it black this stuff here is uv resistant and it's really durable probably include the whole other piece with the car and if somebody gets this and wants to just replicate this, although I can't imagine why they would, it really kind of looks bad. I've got one more thing before the final detail, which I'm gonna let somebody else do that. I got one more thing to do before I call my work here done. I went on eBay probably two months ago and bought a decal kit and it was really cheap. And it was coming from, I don't know, the North Pole or something. Just a little, you know, gingerbread, a little icing on the cake. You know, it's funny. I thought I was doing a really, really nice job on this. And it was the first one that I did. And uh, I came over here and did this one. And then I thought I did a super duper nice job on that one. But when I came back over here to look at this one, it wasn't quite as nice a job as I thought it was, but uh, I realized that now by the time I got here, the ill effects of the Sticks All Krylon spray paint had worn off and my eyeballing was, you know, much more accurate. Okay, that's as done as I'm gonna make it. So in the end, we got a pretty solid 1988 Toyota MR2 with 247,000 miles on it with cold AC and it idles good. And you see what I mean with that thing there? It looks better from here. When you get up on it, it doesn't look so great, but that'll get somebody through. Got our new decals on. All the lights work. Even the tag light, well, one of them does. nice and washed. I'm going to have a guy detail it for me. Tires are good. Brakes are good. Third gear synchronizer, not so good. So yeah, that's uh, I'm actually kind of proud of this little car. It sure does run good now. See, I put all my efforts where it counts. I was a little too optimistic with the steering wheel color. The steering wheel needs to be recovered anyway. Um, so there you go. I'm going to shut this down and go on to the next thing. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this MR2. Um, I've enjoyed working on this little car. Haven't enjoyed driving it as much as I would if I fit in it better. But hey, say la vie, you know. I do my YouTube channel for the love of the cars. I like to talk to myself. And I like to piddle with cars as a middle-aged man. And if I can bring some of that with me, it's kind of like hanging out with my buddies, you know. Um, there's a local group here that call themselves the Belly Brigade here in Florida. So whenever I make these videos, I'm kind of hanging out with the Belly Brigade. And I just really enjoy it. And um, I'm going to be bringing some really cool cars forward 
out of the back, you know, the back lot back there and getting these things going. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and take that notification bell to Pound Town so you'll know when I upload something else. And in the meantime, I really appreciate you guys watching, and I will catch you on the flip side. See you next time. Right. Tune in again. Thanks for watching. Yep.